There is scientific investigation of humor. You know, people think, ah, oh, is that going to ruin humor? Uh, well, the scientific investigation of sex, right? Last I looked, people were still having sex. <laughs> Not me personally, but other people. Uh, the, the so the science of humor. Uh, there, there actually has been a lot of work on what makes something funny. Lots of different theories. I don't subscribe to any one theory in particular, but when I look at all of them, I see they make sense. So one of them, which has part of the picture, is called benign violation, which means that for most things that we really find gut funny, we've got to think both it's wrong and right at the same time. It's something wrong. Like there's a great Leo Cullum cartoon where it has a doctor, and the doctor is saying to the patient, you'll be awake during the entire operation. The anesthesiologist is on vacation. That's not good. <laughs> on the other hand, it's a joke. We knew it was a joke to start with. It's letting us deal with difficult feelings, conflicted feelings, by using laughter and humor as a way to, a sort of emotional regulation to make it okay. That doesn't mean it can't be terrible. It also can be actually, there can be vile humor and racist humor and all of that. Another idea is simply that incongruity, things that don't go together, where it's a little bit hard to say, okay, what exactly is wrong about that? So Matt Diffie has a cartoon where it's Che Guevara, you know, the iconic picture of Che Guevara, but he's got a Bart Simpson t-shirt. Now most people will laugh at that. Is it wrong or right? I don't know. It's mashing up two things that really don't go together. Often there's incongruity that comes together with meaning. And in the jargon of, of humorology, that's called incongruity resolution, which simply means you get it. Another idea about humor that I find interesting is like the simplest idea is just surprise. Surprise can engender fear, awe, <laughs> and laughter. And they're all breathing responses. And surprise is always negative for an organism, which means you should always predict. When you're surprised, you should initially bet on it being bad. If it turns out not to be bad, then that relief will cause laughter. Throughout our day, we're filled with tension, we're dealing with conflict, we're, we're dealing with all sorts of things. Laughter and humor gives us a break and enables us to cope. So, the truth is most of the things you laugh at aren't jokes. When you talk to people and they talk to your friends, note how much you laugh. You're laughing really, usually you laugh every five or six minutes. You laugh 30 times more frequently when you're with people than alone. So it's clearly it's a social response. So part of that laughter and social response is just bonding. And why do we have to bond? Well, because we're a species that both has to collaborate and compete at the same time. Collaborate and compete. That's a tension we're constantly involved or constantly involved. So laughter and humor and even seeing the absurd is sort of like a, a social lubricant which makes it sound dirty but it's not. It's actually okay. <laughs>